here. See? See what we got there? Recording in progress. Okay, got it. Okay, meeting is now streaming and live on Facebook. And uh, we got to admit Brian Neary. Here we go. Um, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Um, there he is. There he is. There. Okay. And I've got to, you know what I got to do is I've got to do this for you. Um, uh, there we go. Got to make you a, a host, a co-host. There we go. And you're ready to go. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Josh to do his uh, little deal. Let's go, Josh. And I'll see All you right. in an hour. All right. See you in a little bit. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. How you doing tonight, Brian? Good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. We are live here on gabnet ready to go we should be joined by a few others in a couple minutes so if anyone out there wants to call up go ahead call on in let us know i would particularly say that if you happen to disagree with me by all means please call up it gets boring talking to people who only agree with you that is important to remember if you only talk to people who agree with you if you only listen to people who agree with you you will get exactly what you deserve which is indoctrinated brainwashed, whatever you want to call it. So you have to be willing to listen to other people. You have to be willing to talk to other people. You know, <clears throat> if there is one thing that my training in the historical profession taught me in life, it was not necessarily about history, uh, names, dates, places, whatever. It was that in order to succeed and make your point you have to decide what your point is and then make it but you have to show that you looked at the alternatives that you looked at the opposite that you disprove them that you whatever you have to have a well-rounded argument you can't just say this is what i think you have to say why you think it how you reach that conclusion how you got there what evidence you looked at, et cetera. Now, we don't have to get quite all that deep into all the things that we talk about, but that is my point here sometimes. I think that might be people's frustration with Bill Meyer sometimes, okay? And I'm not going to get real into it. Phil's not here. He's not here to say what he thinks or whatever. I'm making an observation that that sometimes might be his. I'm sorry, their issue with him is that sometimes he doesn't always have where he got what he's saying came from or what his evidence is or whatever, you know. So that's why we want to make the argument and we want to we want to bring our facts. But until some other people call, you know, we'll we'll get on some stuff here. Um, and, and, and sometimes when sometimes when there's that glimmer of that he starts seeing the other side, he starts doing a joke. You know, he'll, he'll put a joke out there and and yes. you know, instead of facing that, well, maybe there is some of that, but this is why I don't feel that way, you know, so. Yeah, yeah I can uh, agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like I said, I, I won't get too much into it because he is not here, but that would be my observation, you know, and sometimes, you, you know, you're right. Then it wants to get sidetracked, but. I have no problem with uh, disagreement. Um, I, you know, I've said before, say it again. I don't even have a problem with someone who is a supporter of Donald Trump for whatever their reasons may be, Poli political, policy, whatever, where I sort of have my issue or where I would draw the line is when in the face of reason, of you know sense of evidence where you refuse to acknowledge what is the truth because you have a emotional attachment to that person you know that's where i have problems you know i have said before uh if you brought me evidence today of a crime that has been committed or something along those lines of Joe Biden's son or by Joe Biden or whatever, fine. Then I will be the first to say bye-bye Joe Biden or see you in prison Hunter Biden or whatever. 
I'm not scared of that. We have a constitutional system that says if we removed the our hero from office, our nation will go on. You know, I mean, all these people oh, without Trump, what would we do? What do you mean? What would we would do? We would do what we've always done. We would move on. And 20 minutes later, everyone will have forgotten. And it will, you know, four presidents have been assassinated in this country. And yet we're still here. The The system moved it on the way that it was supposed to. Wasn't always pretty. Wasn't always without uh, hurdles or, you know, BS or whatever. But it it endured, you know. So, you know, <clears throat> we have Alan with us. We have Patrick with us. Uh, still waiting on some others. Like I said, anyone that wants to call us up right here, right now, especially if you disagree with me. Sometimes Patrick disagrees with me. I don't take it seriously because he's handicapped. And it's not his fault. Whoa. But sometimes he disagrees with me. You know, I don't know, Patrick. Living in Columbus or in in Ohio, that's a handicap, right? Sometimes, you know. <laughs> but um, is there anything anyone here wants to talk about tonight? You know, I shouldn't get going too much. I mean, is there anything anyone here wants to talk about? You tell me. If you don't, I have stuff. But if you do, go ahead. I was going to comment because uh, I came in right at the end with your last comment that you're right. No matter what's happened in the country, it, it seemed to survive it. Mm -hmm. And we've been through some <clears throat> bizarre stuff. Um, you know, I know there's people that think that Trump is the worst thing that we've ever been through. Right. But you and I both know that that's not the case. It's and, correct. You know, I mean, We've been through civil a civil war. We've been through other conflict. Vietnam tore us apart, and yet <clears throat> here we are. And we had Trump as a president, and so many people thought the country was going to end with that. And right. yet here we are. Yeah, and you're right. There are many that think that the country is going to end with Biden, and I'll guarantee you, whether or not Biden is president. Years or someone else, the country will be here. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, we'll get everybody else's thoughts on. It. But you know, I I don't live in, I I don't live in fear of that. I mean, you know, I I don't. Um, and, and this is everyone is entitled to this because when it comes to criteria of who you vote for, for example, I mean, you are perfectly entitled to judge that for yourself, a hundred percent. You know, I don't live in fear that someone is. Uh, you know, like too old and would die in office. I mean, I can understand too old and couldn't perform their duties. I mean, I, I get, I, I can understand that, you know, but I, I don't, you know, personally, as I'm just saying me, right. I don't live in a fear that someone would be elected and that they would be, you know, old, you know, and that they could have a heart attack and they could die or something. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not scared by that because I say it's happened before it will happen again um at some point and and our constitutional system will pick up and carry us right where we need to go i mean we will we will not miss a step in my opinion i mean we will we will have problems we will have a hiccup we will have a bump we will mourn whatever but you know i mean look you know lincoln's famous line is you know that the nation will endure as it has always endured right i mean he understood that in the lowest low point in the nation's history, you know, and he never stopped believing. I mean, one, and I'm going to Alan right, right here, but you know, one thing that I would always give credit to Lincoln for is that as tired as he got, um, as bad as it got, Lincoln never lost faith in the American constitutional system. And in the in the and in the people, I mean, I, I he didn't always know what the outcome of the war was going to be because that can never be guaranteed. But he knew that the people would go on, and he knew that we could reconcile, you know. And he was right, you know. I give him credit for that. A Alan, um, I just wanted to say something that uh, Trump had said this week that I thought was kind of funny. And it is not not the thing in his head and, and and documents, but he said that if you indict me, 
the country will go berserk. I, that not his exact words. I, I I think he's coming to the realization that he may be indicted. You yeah, know? yeah, he you might know? be. Why make a threat like that if you are not close to being indicted? Well, because he's a he's a blowhard of rhetoric. I mean, because that's what he wants. He wants to stir people up and get to, you know, what he hinted at was that there would be big, you know, there would be big problems, you know, like the country has never seen and, right. you know, riots and things, you know, and, you know, Lindsey Graham and his garbage, you know, I mean, I mean, give me a break. Like the country has never seen 660,000 people died. Okay. You know, in a civil war and, you know, one of every three American males was either, you know, wounded, <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, I mean, that, that, that stuff's just off the map, but, but that's, that's what he wants to do. He, he, he does that for the same exact reason that Vladimir Putin every three or four weeks is, well, you know, I don't know. I, I guess I, I, I could launch a nuclear weapon. You know, if you, if you, if you mess with me one more time, I could launch a nuclear weapon, you know, well, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and launch your one nuclear weapon. And, and, about 15 minutes after it detonates, you know, you better enjoy that 15 minutes between it and your own annihilation, because that's about how long you'll have left to live. That's fine. Yeah. You yeah. know, I don't care what cave you bury yourself in, you know, for every one actual working nuclear weapon that you've got, we've got, you know, like, I don't know, 10,000. So, you know, good luck with that. But he he does it for the same reason, right? To To just to scare people or to make everyone think oh i'm so important no one can live without me i mean he's the guy at your work that constantly tells everybody you know well if i if i quit man this 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 fuck place be in trouble <laughs> yeah no no it yeah. Yeah. i mean look i i've got people where i work that say you know if i left this place this this, this fuck place it'd go down he'd be in trouble i mean i work for a company that's worth you know 20 billion dollars and is present in like 40 countries i mean come on man i mean no one's saying what you do is not important and, you know, it would be, it would hurt and all that. But I mean, you know, I mean, you could nothing's going to happen. Somebody else. You know, no, nothing's going to happen. I mean, they're, they're going to go on doing whatever they do, just like they did all them other days, man. You know, and that's how, that's how I view the country. You know, I mean, you know, Congress is going to convene and do its deal, you know. And who needs a president if they have the right people involved in running the country, right? I mean, that, that, that scary thing with Trump was that he had these people in in these, you know, uh, in charge of the education who was what in, in, you know, public, uh, only in pi private educated, uh, you know, arenas and all this stuff, you know, that mm -hmm. there were like crazy people running these departments that had no clue on the, what their departments do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Biden, something happens to Biden <clears throat> or old age or from somebody. You know, as long as they have, you know, the right people involved, that's what I'm more concerned about. Yeah, it, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, even if you don't, even if you don't like the, you know, the person, you know, for example, uh, I'm not nearly as big a fan of Kamala Harris as Patrick is, for example, you know, but I don't want to wake up tomorrow and see her be president of the united states but if i woke up tomorrow and 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 joe biden had passed away and and they had sworn in kamala harris i mean oh what will we do what will we do i mean i don't think she'd be a very good president but i think that we would just have a, not a very good president for a couple of years i mean that's the first time that's ever happened i mean come on you know we've had a lot of not very good presidents you know i mean we've probably had more not very good presidents than we've had good presidents i mean it, it that that's just the facts you know that's just the number i mean so the nation would 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 go on i think we would be worse off right i think that not a lot would get done i think that we would be lacking some things that we needed for progress you know immediate progress anyway but the nation would go on we would still have overall progress you know i've argued before and i will continue to because it's what i believe that the this nation is on a very long, very slow arc of improvement from the day that it was found until today, and that that arc will never cease to point upward. You know, I don't care how bad it gets or what I mean, is it is the nation not improved from the Civil War until now, right? 
Did the lowest low point in American history not also then bring about the greatest reforms and, and, the, and the path to reforms? I mean, were the Civil War amendments to the Constitution not critical? Do people still today not argue over them and use them as, a, you know, as the basis for arguing law or trying to fight uh, laws they don't agree with, right, or things like that? Now, I know some people are going to come out and say, yeah, but it led to, you know, Jim Crow and segregation. Oh, exactly. Sure it did. And then that stuff slowly got fixed too, right? I mean, you're talking about fiction, a society, a nation. Uh, it's not like, you know, fixing something at your work <laughs> where you call IT and they get it handled. Right? I mean, you know, it, it, it's not the same. So you cannot compare it to that. But it is on the long, slow arc. Of progress. I mean, if other people don't agree with that, that's a reasonable. Um, you know, that's a that's a reasonable uh, argument or opinion, and call us up and tell us why you don't think so. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, if you want to say that you would rather be somewhere else or do something else, I mean, we're not going to stop you. I'm not even going to blame you if that's what makes you satisfied personally. You know. I don't have a problem with that, but I don't have any, I don't have any, uh, you know, worry for our country or for our, uh, our constitutional system or whatever. Trump didn't bring it down. He's not going to bring it down. He can't. I mean, he thinks he's all powerful, but he's not. That document was here long before Trump and it'll be here long after Trump, you know, I mean, and more people will go to the archives and stand in line to see that document than will ever file through and see his casket or his <laughs> monument. And that's the facts, you know? I mean, it, you know, it, it just is. I mean, people still stand in line at the National Archives today for a half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour or whatever it is to stand in a room for 45 seconds until they move you along to look at the document that governs our lives. You know, but that's that's a true statement. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. So, you know, I still have faith in that. I mean, if you don't tell me, you don't, you know, tell me why. I mean, QAnon has got Kevin thinking that, you know, we're all going down the, the toilet. So, you know, but hey, I can't help it that he's easily swayed by the Internet. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. But, you know, that's that's. That's what I think about it. I mean, but anything else that uh, anybody has to add, I mean, go ahead and call us up and tell us. But, you know, go ahead, Alan. So I'm probably, <clears throat> excuse me, more liberal than Patrick. And I know you made a joke earlier about Patrick and Kamala Harris. But I would, I think she's too liberal to be president. That would be, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you. I would, I mean, she would do the job, I'm sure. But I just think she's way too liberal to be president. Yeah. Well, and I, I, my problem with her is, I mean, I guess we're getting into her a little bit, is I just don't trust her because I think she's a little fake. You know, I yeah. think she'd say whatever she, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think she ran down Joe Biden in the in the primaries because she thought that's what was going to work. I, I don't I don't know what she believes because I don't know that she'll tell me actually what she believes. I think she'll tell me whatever she thinks you and I want to hear. You know, and I don't care for that, yeah, you know, and I think a lot of people don't care for that. I mean, look, part of Trump's appeal to people was, you know, that he would say stupid shit. Right. I mean, you know, that, that OK, part of Joe Biden's appeal to people. OK, is that he will say stupid shit. I mean, <laughs> you know, he, he doesn't always say stuff that I think he should say. And he doesn't always say stuff like a politician usually says it, but I'm okay with that. Again, like I said, the nation's going to go on. I have faith in that. Um, so, you know, a little bit of looseness here and there is okay. You know, presidents are going to make mistakes. I mean, uh, is everybody aware of that? Or, you know, I mean, I am, you know, uh, history is full of presidents who made, you know, mistakes. Some of them made more than others. Got news for you. George Washington made mistakes. You know, I mean, he made 
quite a few of them before he was president. As a matter of fact, you know, I mean, we don't we don't now think of we think of Washington now as the the first president, the best president, the father of his country and all that. We don't think of him running for his life from Brooklyn, New York to New Jersey before the war could be over when it first started. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, we think of him crossing the Delaware Christmas night to attack Trenton, Princeton and the Hessians. But what about the first time he crossed the river in New Jersey, you know, running for his life with his troops almost annihilated in the, in the Battle of Brooklyn in New York? I mean, you know, we don't no one really talks about that. I mean, historians talk about it. And if you pick up a narrative of the war, you'll, you'll get the story. I mean, it's, no one lies about it. I'm just saying we don't. Uh, we don't uh, have a postage stamp with him, you know, panicking the fucking crossing the river, right? I mean, you know, we have one of them crossing the river in a boat, you know, looking like he's about to go whoop ass. I mean, you know, that's that's how we look at it. So, you know, I mean, presidents make mistakes. Patrick? Yeah, it, it, it's the same with Lincoln, though. Uh, really? With a misstep with every general that he picked to run the war until he hits Grant. I mean, but none of our, I, I mean, I don't know how into that historical aspect people are, but that's not something I hold against the president because mm-hmm. you, you go by what you know, and mm-hmm. if it turns out to be a cluster, well, right. it means well, it's smart it's, enough to fire them and get someone mm-hmm. else in there that yes. he felt would do a better job. Yeah. I mean, he only had the options to work with that he had to work with, too. Yeah. You know, but he did make some mistakes there. I mean, he, he picked McKe- M- McKellen, uh, McClellan twice. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, uh, first time apparently wasn't bad enough, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he obviously made mistakes with that before he got. But, you know, I, but and, you know, and we've talked about this before. He he made mistakes, but he always knew what he needed and he always knew what he wanted from the beginning. He just couldn't find it. Right. What he wanted in the beginning was an aggressor, was a fighter. You know, what he, what he wanted was a warrior, but he, he couldn't find one. Everybody he tried acted like they were, but they wouldn't do it. You know, when he got to Grant was when he finally said, well, there's the bulldog that I've been looking for. Right. I mean. There's the guy who, once he gets it in his teeth, is going to gnaw and chew until the job is done, and he's not going to let go of the bone. And that's that's basically what – that's close to Lincoln's words, I think, you know, is that's what he had looked for, you know, and he, he just couldn't find it. He searched, and he looked. So at least he knew, right? At least he knew what he was looking for. He knew what he needed. He knew what he wanted. Just couldn't find it. Hard to blame him for that in a way. But but that's the point is presidents don't always get what they want either. <laughs> you know, I mean, oftentimes they don't get what they want. That's why they make they make such a big deal about, uh, you know, the media sometimes about maybe a president uh, who didn't get a bill passed or, or something like that. And, oh, it's a defeat. And how will he how will he come back from it? Oh, what, what do you mean? How will he come? I mean, he'll fucking get up in the morning and he'll still be the president. I mean, that's what I always say. I, I, I've never liked that stuff. I mean, he'll he'll get over it the same way a football team that's 12 and three will get over. I mean, they'll play a game the next week, I guess. <laughs> How will they get over it? I, I mean, they'll they'll get up and they'll keep going. I mean, you know, that's the American. That's the real American way. I mean, do do uh, do special operators in the military like uh, SEALs or you know, Rangers or Delta. I mean, look, they believe that if you can hold your weapon, no matter what else is wrong with you, if you can hold your weapon and your finger can pull the trigger, you're still in the fight. It doesn't matter if you're laying on the ground, choking in your own blood, to use Churchill's words. If you can hold your weapon and pull the trigger, you're still in the fight. I mean, to me, that's what you want in a president. Not somebody who says stupid things or tells you they're going to own the libs or, you know, whatever else is crap people, you know, fell for with Trump. That's what you want in a president is someone who says, well, I didn't get that done, but I'm back at it. I mean, you know, that's that's what we should look for. We should look for people with intelligence, with integrity, with, uh, 
you know, with drive, with determination, with uh, people skills, who can communicate. I mean, you know, like 10 things or whatever, but that's not what we do. We look for the dumbest person in the room half the time, you know, and half the time that's what we get because they say stuff that is provocative or that you say to yourself in your mind or, or whatever, you know, I mean, that, that, that's what they do. I mean, what, Kevin, what, what do you, what's the, like, the, what's the number one thing you look for when, when you want someone is running for president? I mean, what, what's like the, the top thing that you look at, you know, if, if you're trying to choose someone. Can you hear us? Uh, depends on what's going on. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah, go ahead. Depends on what's going on. Like the last couple of them, it's a lot of it's been uh, transportation, but obviously nowadays it's obviously the, the economy. Right. Um, you know, and I look for integrity in the president, really. Right. Yeah, yeah we'll I agree with that. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, we've got, we've got like in San Jose, we have the mayor's race coming up and, and for me, you know, seeing all the homelessness and stuff like that, and so one of the guys who's running right now, yeah, that's his number one thing, you know, and I think that was the last mayor's big thing too. And they still had a lot of problems. So, so here we go again and yeah, trying to hear, you know, all these promises again. And like you said, it's, it's what's, what's now. And then, you know, what, what they, they have all these polls to see what the people want to hear or what they want to, you know, what their, what their top worries are inflation and gas prices or whatever. And then a lot of those yeah. guys key off of that and then nothing gets it done. So right. I, I'm, I'm anxious to see this one mayor. I have hopes, but uh, I'm going to vote for him, but we'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, and that brings up, you know, like the economy, for example. So, you know, this is what I don't understand. I mean, so you guys tell me how you see the economy because everyone acts like there's these economic problems or, you know, oh, the market went so low today and all that. You know why the market goes low? I mean, in my opinion, because them fucking people convinced themselves of something fucking stupid that'll be gone in 20 minutes and they made it go low so they could drive it down and probably buy up more stock and get it all back in a couple of weeks. I mean, what what's the economic problem right now? I mean, are there economic problems right now that you guys are seeing that are bothering you? Because I look around and I don't see it. I look around and, and I see the business that I work for is as busy as it can get. It's constantly being told every day to make every last single drop of whatever it is you make that you can make. You know, I, I look at it and say, oh, you'd like a job? Well, you're hired. Oh, we got to interview you. OK, let's go waste our time with an interview. You, you know, we don't care if you're stupid. We just need someone. You just come in. You can fucking have a job. Here you go. And oh, by the way, you know, we pay about 30 fucking dollars an hour. I mean, it, I'm not talking about minimum wage jobs. I mean, and, and I see all the people that I talk to, the vendors that service us that I talk to <laughs> everywhere I go. They all say the same exact, the same exact thing. You know, hey, this stuff that we make for you, we literally can't make it fast enough. I mean. I don't. So, Alan, you had your hand up. I mean, you tell me. I mean, what do you guys? Food see? prices I mean, in this country are out of control. Well, well that's, the where I see, that's where I see part of the economy hurting the small guy. The, the right, you know, and stuff like that. Um, the rich folks don't care. They're going to pay sure. for it no matter what. Uh, but people with a family and stuff, middle class and lower middle class, it's really hurting them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and so, yeah, the stock market goes down. I have some stock, not happy, but it'll go back up. The yeah. true prices in the meantime can bankrupt a family. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are inflationary issues. I mean, that, absolutely. So, I mean, I'm not trying to dismiss that. I just mean, you know, you, you get this impression sometimes that it's like we're, you know, we're going to be in this depression next week or something. And I'm, I just, I look at it and I'm just like, you know, to me, if you want to work in this country right now, you, you should be able to. Sure. I mean, yeah. and I, I know someone's going to go find like that one off guy or I mean, that, that's what happens with voting. You know, you know, someone will go find like that one guy or whatever that couldn't vote or didn't vote or what, you know, 
I mean, but I'm just saying, like, if you want a job in this country right now, you should be able to get one. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. it, at least in a, in a pretty decent one. I mean, you know, I, again, you know, we're, you know, we're looking for plenty of people. Uh, we don't have any special requirements, you know. I mean, there's a lot of that out there. I mean, is your work picked up, Patrick? I mean, you know, do you think Actually, things are... No. What's uh, that? I've been pretty flat um, for about two, two, three years. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it, it is what it is. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, in the, in the, in the small micro sense, you know, the economy is very, uh, you know, it's specific to people or whatever, but I just think that overall, you know, I've, I've always hated stuff in the media about the stock market. You know, well, the stock market dropped today on uh, worries of blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what do you mean? So they got worried about something that hasn't happened yet. And they, what, they, they fucking sold their stock. I mean, get the fuck out of here, man. It's a fucking line of horse shit. You know I mean? They shouldn't say it dropped today. They should say the stock market today was manipulated by people who want to make a lot of fucking money. You know, that's what they should say because that's what it was. It was fucking manipulated by people who want to make more money. I mean, it, it they dropped on fears of some garbage. You know, I mean, it's made up bullshit. It, it, it's not the small guy that drives the market up and down. Right. It's the, it's the big, uh, uh, like mutual funds and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, and 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 they'll they'll run the market down on 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 like on fear of you know gas prices or whatever. I mean, like what, what, what the fuck's that got to do with? It? I mean, they, they used to have they used to say. Because there's no demand for gas, or they, they made too much gas, so the prices right. went up, and then then they didn't have enough gas, and so the prices were going up. It's like every different situation, they would keep saying prices are going up. Yeah, but 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 why does a fear of stuff like that make the the stock of a company like mine go down? You know, nine dollars in a in a, in a single day or something. You know, which is ten percent of its stock value or what? You know, I mean, why does stuff like that? You know, why does that drive the market into the shitter for a day or something? You know, and then everybody acts like, oh, you know, I, what are we going to do? You know, and then two weeks later, you know, the same fucking news program will tell you about where, well, you know, the Dow Jones hit a 10 year high today or something. <laughs> I mean, it just it was, it's, it was all fake money anyway, then I guess, you know, I mean, until it's in my hand, it's all fake to me anyway, you know, until I can have it, you know. So I, I don't. I don't understand that a lot of times. I mean, that, that stuff drives me crazy. I mean, you, you know, it's last week I did a segment where I said, I, I was going to tell you about things that, you know, drive me crazy or I couldn't care about, you know, and it was the queen's dogs. So I don't know if it's the economy today. I think what it was going to be was what I was going to tell you was what the, the very quick thing that drives me crazy that I could care less about that I'm going to pass on is when I go to the newspaper, such as the Washington Post, and I'm trying to read the news stories and I go halfway down, there's always this big thing in the middle of people who write in and they ask this lady questions like my sister-in-law was mean to me and I told her, you know, that she couldn't come to our Thanksgiving dinner. Did I do the right thing? Ask so-and-so. That is the, who the fuck writes the letter? Some lady that, what the fuck is wrong with? You? I mean, what do you mean? You, you, man, I hate that shit. Like, there's no other fucking news you could have put in that one little, you know. I'd rather read another story about fucking Trump than I would about that. So there you go. There's what bothers me. You know, stuff that I don't care about. I was scrolling down earlier and I came across that again. And I, you can't help but read what it says, you know. And it was, I... I told my sister-in-law she couldn't come to, I don't know, fucking something. And I'm like, who I'm fucking, sure they, I mean, you know, I'm I mean, sure they've that several times too. You know, right. right. Fucking bitch will be on Mari Povich or something next week. Like no one, <laughs> you know, I mean, can't you settle your white trash fucking differences at home? <laughs> you know, no one cares about any of this stupid right. But anyway, that's something that bothers me. Uh, so what do you guys think about the poll numbers that we talked about on, uh, 
on <clears throat> on the Ramble on Alex's show. I mean, so there are poll numbers out, I guess, last night or this morning or, you know, whatever. You know, like I said, that look pretty good for the president and not so good, you know, for the former president. I mean, former president's approval rating at like 31 or 32 percent. Joe Biden's up into the high 40s. Um, which is a dramatic improvement, you know, in the last couple months. His favorability rating is up. Trump's is way down. I mean, you know, uh, Biden winning currently in a head-to-head matchup with both DeSantis and Trump. So, you know, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, Jesus and, you know, assistant Jesus, if you will, in the Republican Party. So, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys tell me what you think about that? I mean, I, I, I think that's interesting, you know, that head to head matchup thing. I mean, it is too early. And I know that's, you know, what people are going to say. And of course it is, you know, but I'm just saying, but the numbers are there, you know, I who mean, did, the, who did the polling? Uh, it was one of the major, the major outlets. I, you know, they said the name this morning and it was, uh, you know, I honestly can't remember. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I didn't hear it. The first, that's heard my that. fault, but, uh, yeah. I mean, it was it was it was one of the major outlets. It, I heard it on Morning Joe when I was driving. Like the Harris Poll or or something like that. It was one of those. I mean, it yeah. wasn't you know. I I didn't get this from some made up you know deal somewhere. I mean, this was uh this wasn't a Phil Meyer poll. I mean, this was like a real poll that people actually you know contributed to, and they added up all the numbers and everything. Sure. You okay. know, but uh, I. I mean, I think that's interesting that the head to head deal, I think, is uh, kind of, you know, an interesting thing. I mean, what do you what do you think? I mean, that, you know, for. Uh, I don't know, six months ago, for sure, but maybe even as recent as three months ago, you know, there were people saying that you could take Joe Biden out of the oven. Right. Because he was done, you know, and now in a head to head poll, you know, like I said, a legitimate, you know, a poll uh he's you know like six points over both DeSantis and and Trump you know in a in a head to head so i think that's pretty interesting it doesn't mean he would get reelected or he will get reelected but uh i mean what do you make of that patrick uh i when i when i look at polls like that one it, you know you, you said it earlier it's too early for any of this to mean anything as far as head to head. But I find it more interesting, like you, that Biden is on his way up and Trump is on his way down. Now, mm-hmm. what the, what is the cause of those? And that mm-hmm. that is where my interest lies. Is it due to the potential legal issues with Trump that he's going down and does Biden benefit from that? Yeah. Because it, when the poll, when the people are calling from the poll, are they reaching people that are more in the middle that voted Trump last election and now with the legal stuff, they're going, okay, I guess Biden doesn't look too bad. Right. So I'm, I'm more curious as to what causes that than the actual numbers. Yeah, I uh, I would agree. And, I, you know, I don't remember the number, but there the, one of the polling questions that I heard discussed was something about Trump's approval rating or favorability rating among independents. And it was like some astronomically low number. I mean, like 17 or 18 percent or something. And, you know, that's where people were saying. Yeah, that you, just, no one can get elected to anything with numbers like that, you know, among among independents, you know. Now, there could be a long discussion about what's an independent and, you know, I mean, so I get it. But, you know, those numbers are, I mean, they are what they are, you know. I mean, I don't know. What do you think, Kevin? I mean, you know, that's usually uh, uh, a good look at those. I noticed uh, my own mute here. Let me see. Uh, no, you're good. Um Race Ballone in the chat was asking, he's asking you if uh, Asa Hutchinson would possibly run for president. He seems to be moving in the middle politically. He's asking you that. Uh, my answer to that is I don't know. Okay. Just thought I'd bring it up because he was asking in the chat. But... I, yeah, I don't have that 
chat up, so uh, I have to yeah, figure out how to start it. checking that. But thought I'd bring it up for him. Okay. Yeah. The, you know, my answer to that is I I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't yeah, know. I haven't heard much from Asa Hutchinson either. Right. Yeah, I'll confess. I don't, I'm not. Uh, I don't really know much about about them. So, yeah, I'm not. Uh, can't really uh, provide that, much of an opinion on that really at the moment. Is this a male or a female? That's how little I know who the hell this is. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. He's a male. I I, I know of him, but I don't know how he's moved to the middle politically or not. Where's he from, Kevin? He's, he's from um, Georgia, Alabama, down there, down the south. Uh, he's always he's always popped up on the um, he's always popped up he was popping up a lot during the Trump era. He would back him and then he would not, and then he'd back him and then he would not. He kind of he'd always ha yeah Arkansas that's right. He was uh, yeah he was kind of backing Trump a little bit and then he would kind of back away from him. And, uh huh. Um, it was that kind of in the middle guy. Right. I don't know if he would run for president. I don't think he'd be yeah. honestly very strong. But who knows, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I probably tend to agree with that. I mean, if I'm, I'm not all that familiar with him, so, you know, I can't really say. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't want to say, you know, negatively if I haven't, you know, really looked into it. So, yeah. You know, that just, I would be fair. So I guess I just withhold judgment. I, you know, think about that. But I mean, I mean, I guess what we, you know, to go along with what we were talking about, though, yeah. as I would say then to try to at least provide some answer is those polling numbers at least indicate a little bit that there is room, you know, for opposition to Trump from his own party, too, right? I mean, I don't think they've grasped the reality of it yet, but he's not. I don't think that he's what they think that he is, you know, or he's not that what he was. Um, I, as this data continues to come out, maybe then they will change their mind, you know. I mean, so we may six months from now, for example, or something, we may sit here one day and we may be talking about Republicans, you know, who Marco Rubio or anyone who are all of a sudden like Trump. I, 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 you know, I was really never a big supporter of him, you know, uh, uh, Trump. I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, he, he was president. Right. Um, I mean, you know, these, these people suddenly be like, who, who, who is this Trump you keep asking about? I, I don't, I don't know anything about this it's Trump, really you know, <laughs> right you know i mean something will happen maybe and then all of a sudden they'll act like they've never heard of him you know so we'll see how that develops you know i'm, I'm not sure where that'll go i mean you know but I, I have an interesting question because i'm sure that this is this is coming so i, I guess we'll, we'll ask what you think here first but so listen this this deal with the law in Texas and the law in Florida that is going to tell technology and social media companies who they can and they cannot ban is, is probably going to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. You know, so the Texas law was upheld. The Florida law, which is basically the same exact law, was struck down uh, yesterday or today in Florida. Um or maybe it was a few days ago, and today was the appeal. Florida has appealed. Texas people in Texas have appealed. You know, they both asked the Supreme Court to hear the case. The Supreme Court does typically give a lot of weight to cases that have been heard in the Federal Court of Appeals, and there was disagreement, and do have large constitutional issues. I mean, it has all the criteria, if you understand what I'm saying, for a run to the high court so i guess without discussing a lot of it at the moment or we can do that i mean you tell me do, i mean do you think the government should have the right to tell a technology company whether or not they can decide to ban you or me or whoever really for any reason 
I mean, they're arguing they shouldn't be able to ban people for their political statements or beliefs or whatever. And, you know, so do you think that's the case or should not be the case? And, and like I said, I've, I've, I've asked this before. I mean, if you do, if you do think that it is, or if you don't, I mean, how is that different though, sometimes from, like I said, from the baker who says, I won't sell you a cake because, you know, you're going to take that cake to your gay wedding. And I don't believe in that, you know, and, you know, there are Republicans or conservatives or just people, maybe whatever, who think that's fine. But so why then is it not fine for a technology company to say, I don't want you on my platform for whatever reason. I mean, if you're saying that I can, you know, turn you away for a, a religious reason, why can't a technology company turn you away for a, a, a speech reason, you know, or an expression reason? Those, those rights are just as sacred and guaranteed as all others, right? I mean, so, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think a technology company should have the right to uh, kick people off or do you think they should be told by the government no you can't you got to let everybody on you got to let them all say you know whatever they want i mean what do you think <laughs> that's a tricky one you right. set it up that way do it kick them off kick yeah them yeah, off. yeah it, it, off. Then it, and it comes to you know then what i i see yeah, if it's a if it's a company if it's a private company they should be able to do what they want but then for them to be fair or say that they're being fair and their subjectivity about how they're kicking people off, that's mm -hmm. always going to be in question. You know, well, you're kicking Trump off because he's doing this, but then other people are doing it. Maybe they're not kicking him off. I don't know. So yeah, right. they got to be they got to be fair about it. Yeah, then they got to regulate them being fair, but no, because it's their private company, right, or public. But yeah. well, yeah. and then what happens is somebody like Trump can go off and start his own Truth Social. Sure. And he did. What do you want? Yeah. So that that, but but you know, I brought that up a week or two ago. I'm just saying, if Barack Obama shows up on True Social next week with an account, or Hunter Biden starts an account and he's blasting Trump every single day, <laughs> is Trump not going to kick him off? Of yeah. course he is. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, is he not? Mm -hmm. And should he or should he not have the right to? If it's his company. Yes. I mean. Right. Well, if he if he put in there, you can't criticize me. Yeah, you right. can. But if he said that you have the right to say what you right. say in his rules, right? Then he really can't. But he's, he's bashing him, you know, in a disparaging way, and that's in the rules. Then kick him off. Yeah, you yeah. know, and that's. Yeah, that's I mean, that, you know, you know, that's. I mean, I guess. I, I'm not other places that they're saying that you can't do that in a disparaging way, and I think that's where Trump crossed the line in a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not advocating so much as I'm just asking, you know, I guess what people think. I mean, Patrick, you look like you were going to say something a minute ago, maybe about it. I mean, I'm sure you thought about it a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've always been of the opinion that private company should be able to decide, you know, within a lawful mean, like you said, so it's not discrimination because they're of certain race or a certain religion, but, you know, that said, you know, they, they can do whatever they want. The only thing that, you know, and I kind of like, I think where Brian was going is, at at some point, there seemed to be some hypocrisy going on with some, and and I've even seen it with people, you know, like they'll kick Trump off, yet there are other conservative Republicans that are saying the same thing, and they're still on Twitter or Facebook. So, is it just because they're a Trump? Or is it just because it was so and so? And the other yeah. thing that, that does bother me, even though I'm I do believe in you know the free market and, and private companies should be able to do what they want, right. is in the case of Twitter 
mainly Twitter. Um, that's kind of the, the modern day um, forum for everybody. And if you start to block people from being able to state what they want freely, um, it it isn't, it's not against the, the First Amendment. I mean, I'm not one of those, but I yeah. just think it, it's too bad that a company feels that they need to do that for whatever reason. I mean, yeah. at that point, I wonder, does the company feel threatened by someone's opinion more so than they're protecting the public? You know, it, it just seemed, it seemed weird to me that a, yeah. a technology a, company would care what anybody's saying on it. Um, it and here, here's what I'm, where I'm going. You mentioned Trump specifically, right. and Trump's company. If mm -hmm. somebody berating Trump, right. I can get that. And if somebody berating whoever owned Twitter, that's a direct attack on that company. But if someone is attacking Biden from the right, mm -hmm. what does that, who cares? Why did that bother the company? Yeah. And I don't think that was the issue. I think it was more the issue that um, what got him booted off was him, uh, more of the January 6th stuff, I think. Right. Got him booted off, which had nothing yeah. to do with Biden and had nothing to do with talking about anybody else who was fighting. Right. And I think that no one else and i think anybody that really didn't didn't anybody else get kicked off i mean i i understand your point your point is right that yeah marjorie taylor green get kicked off oh yeah right i think so yeah so she did get kicked off if she did yeah um i don't know for sure but if, i thought she did case, you're right you know those people should have been kicked off if they weren't yeah. uh but you're right. You know, that's, I agree with that. Yeah. But, it's, a, yeah. really, it's a fine line judgment call. Right. That somebody has to make and who makes that call. Yeah. Right. And, you know, Texas and Florida are saying the government, which to me flies in the face of yes. conservatism yeah. I don't or the, or, right. or, or the Republican party of like 20 minutes ago, I don't you know, think the government which, should which, make which, which was saying, the government has no right to tell the donut shop owner he can't sell donuts to, you know, the guy who's going to take him to his gay wedding That's as the good. appetizer, you know, stupid shit like that. You know, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not saying whether I thought it was right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what those people said, you yeah. know, and it's not what they're saying now. And there are certain, I mean, there's always a million hypotheticals, right? But I'm just saying when we get into that, I mean, so does that mean that like tomorrow I can't start my own social media platform and I can say, you know, I'm tired of all that other garbage. This, this Josh Twitter is, you can only tweet about sports, you know, and if you talk any politics, I'm kicking you off. And then the government could say, well, no, you can't kick them off because they talked about, you can't do that. Or I could say, you can only talk about sports. But if you disagree with me about it, I'm kicking you off. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's the stupidest thing ever. But I guess if it's my social media network and I only invited you guys, you know, I don't know. That's I mean, boring, too. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, so that's I guess that's where we get into, you know, I mean, I'm just like I said, I'm just asking the question because I'm just certain that, like I said, if Barack Obama got a true social account tomorrow and every day was just all fucking day long was trump this trump that trump this trump that trump would kick him off he would say ban his account or whatever but his his homeboys aren't saying that about you know twi i mean twitter and all that i mean that's they're saying the opposite so i mean i'm just saying that they're we're not gonna they're not gonna practice what they preach or or whatever i mean I'm just asking, you know, the question because, 
you know, I see it as a little bit, I see it a little bit, really. I think they're going to try to use it as like a left, right issue, you know, as like something else they can get people to go at each other about. But I don't know if everyone's really going to see it that way. I mean, just, you know, I guess that's why I'm asking, you know, is I, I don't really know if, uh, if everybody's going to see it that way, because I do think that you get a lot of people on different perspectives politically, like myself and like Patrick, who at times both sit here and say, well, you know, I don't know. It's Twitter's fucking. Unfortunately, Twitter I think people will take that bait and make it another yeah. divisive thing. Oh, I do too. But you, you know? see what I'm saying though? But you know, like Patrick and I almost, I, I assume, unless I'm misunderstanding him, we sit here and say, you know, like I said, well, I don't know. It's, it's Twitter's program. It's their network. Yeah. No one asked. No one told you you had to put it on your phone. Right. No one told you you that, had to that, type any fucking tweets into it. You know what's on there. Yeah. Don't use it if you don't like right. it. Right. You know, no go, one told you you had to open to it. Social. Yeah. To no one told you you had to open the app and read it. Yeah. You know, you, you in fact, you asked them for it. You yeah. went to a, a little store and you typed it in. And you downloaded it and you checked that yes, I understand box that you didn't read a fucking word of. Exactly. And you you opened it on your phone and you read it, and then someone wrote something that you didn't like, and all of a sudden you didn't like that. Well, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, and I understand that we're gonna get into issues of did it promote violence and did it, you know, and that is very important. But I'm saying that, you know, that law didn't say that really it's watered it down to you know you just can't ban someone because they disagree with you politically and i say well why not i mean i guess i'm just asking well why not it's my own little so i can't start a chat room on google hangouts and only invite you six guys you know or, or what and, and if, if someone doesn't agree with us i can be like oh no this is a democrat only chat get the fuck out of here i mean i'm not allowed to do that no more well, well, no, that's that's okay because it's Google Hangouts and they own it. All. Okay, well, I started my own company. I started a Josh Hangouts, and you know, I mean, so I can't do that. I'm just asking. I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying is, I think that's going to be a big issue coming up. I mean, and the court is probably going to have to decide it, and then we're going to have to live with it, um, because the chances of our lawmakers after the court makes some sort of decision, if, if a lot of people don't like it, the chance of them making a law that fixes their mistake or whatever, I think we know is pretty slim, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, that's not a political statement. It's, it's going to be tough for them to do it. I mean, either party, I don't care which one is in power or whatever. It's going to be tough for them to, to make a law that governs it, that makes everybody happy. Cause I mean, something like that, you ain't never going to make everybody happy. I mean, yeah. you know, that's, that's not going to happen. So the conservatives are basically asking for a massive change to the status quo when it comes to social media, right? They're asking for a massive change to the status quo, is it not? And it has just been my understanding that conservatism and the Republican Party are not usually the ones who ask for massive changes to the status quo in anything. And that's that's all I'm saying. I mean, it, it seems more, this seems more like something that the left would be crying about, but I don't know. They're not. So, you know, I mean, well, they are a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that's how I read it. It just is, it's odd to me. So, you know, Alex Bennett's back. Hey, hi there. How you doing? Do you have a good time tonight? I yeah. think so. Yeah. 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 Oh, look who's there. Hey, Adrian. Hey, hey, hey. Get out. See? Almost tall. It's like a little spider all over you. I mean, uh, no, this chair broke wet during Alex's show. I know what's going on. <laughs> Look at that. That I, This Adrian, she, we, she's grown up before our very eyes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, can't yeah think... stop, you can't stop the show. See? Nope. No, Alex, you can't stop the show. Uh, hey, if you guys want to go on for hours, I don't care. You know, I have to go to sleep. That's true. Yeah. No, I think we had. Uh, I think we had. We talked about a few things tonight. So yeah, you know. yeah, good. That that last one was pretty good. I think that's going to be a big deal coming up. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think 
social media uh, regulation doesn't really exist. I think a lot of people want it to exist. No one can decide how it should look. And well, I don't think it should exist. You know, right. I don't think but you know, no one no one can decide. And and I guess just real quick, you know what's gonna happen is everyone knows about this problem. No one's done anything about this problem. No one can agree about this problem. It's gonna go to the court. The mm -hmm. court is gonna say what they think, and then everyone's gonna say, Oh my fucking god, the court, the court, the court, the court. You asked them to fix the problem that you wouldn't fix for the last how long? Hey, <laughs> you know, your what fault, not their fault. Yeah, you, know, you, know, so. you know, I just don't understand what regulating social media will do, except to add a more of a level of censorship to an already censored driven society. That's I could. I would that's agree. a point well taken. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I for years fought for less censorship in broadcasting Sure, sure. Never, to no avail. You know, yeah. I mean, to this day, you still can't say fuck on television. Yeah. I mean, it, it, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It is, uh, it is for sure. Uh, so to say that, you know, the internet came along and there was no censorship, okay? And maybe there shouldn't be, even though some dangerous things come out of it being open, you know? Fair point, yeah. Uh, it's just odd that we have these laws coming from, you know, Florida and Texas, where normally anything should go, right? No, I mean, I, that's what I just see it. It's just it's just an odd deal. Hmm. And because of them, it's probably going to go to the high court. And, you know, then we're going to be stuck with whatever they say. And a lot of people aren't going to like it. You know? The unregulators want to regulate. Yeah. Oh, right. all the time. All the yeah. time. Because, you know, and, 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 and reg regulation is the only thing that gives them power. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and they don't want to give up that power. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and, and Patrick knows what I'm saying. And the, it's going to go to the court and they're going to decide and no one's going to like what they have to say, you know, but has our Congress done anything about it? Right. Yeah. I mean, they haven't. And, wow. and, and a couple state legislatures, you know, got a little overzealous and they forced the issue. And now who's, now who's making laws through the courts. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's you know, cuts both ways. I mean, that's my point. Well, um, anyway, yeah. I'm hearing a little, little kind of sound coming through my other my ear here, and I don't know what it is. Raise your other antenna. Raise the other antenna. Hey, well, listen, let's, uh, I guess we'll bring this to a close, and uh, it, it, it sounds like you all had a great time, and we got to figure out what to do with Josh, hmm? you know? Yeah. Uh, we have a show called What to Do with Josh. Yeah, a show <laughs> called What to Do with Josh. <laughs> do you yeah, want let's, to, figure out, let's figure out what to do with something. josh starring josh yeah we'll figure something out do you anyway. think that jack wants to go back five days a week i don't know ask him oh i, well, I don't yeah, know you talk to him all the time you always imp impose upon people <laughs> what you think they're gonna want or not want i don't know i'm asking you you know him better than i, do. I think he probably wants to do five days a week okay yeah. I, mean, he, he, I think he tr tr sorely misses doing a show. Well, we right? miss him too, but then where does Josh fit into our schedule? <laughs> our schedule. Well, your <laughs> schedule? Our schedule, not my <laughs> schedule. Your schedule. We'll figure it out. Alex's schedule. You know, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Alex's <laughs> schedule. That's There's a... Uh, there's like this Republican forum on on C-SPAN right now with Kevin McCarthy talking about voting for the party. And it's all full of their Republican lawmakers. And Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee, bless her little heart, just got up and asked a question. And they were all just a clap. And I mean, if you looked up Circle Jerk in the dictionary, let me fucking say it. It is on C-SPAN right fucking now. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> anyway, everybody, uh, uh, good night. It's been nice having you here. See you later. Right. So uh, just say so long and goodbye to everybody who's watching. Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>